Come on, Ernie. How to do? Let's make some cornbread. Um, we're gonna have leftovers tonight because I've got um, all that soup that I made Sunday night, uh, and which I imagine Whitney and Whitney she must be thinking of when she's in Texas. Brantley, my granddaughter, and Ashley won't eat soup because they've taken it every day for lunch, so they won't want it for supper. But none of us have eaten any of it, and it hadn't been warmed up or anything, so I was going to throw it back at them tonight. So I was going to make some cornbread to go with it. I got that fried rice left over, uh, and there's a whole bunch of macaroni and cheese in there from one night that I made, so somebody could eat that. And if uh, there's ramen noodles, I can fry them and egg and put on top of ramen. Did y'all say ramen or ramen? I don't know what they are, but you know, them little pack of noodles. Uh, if somebody wants that, and we got chicken nuggets and fish sticks, I could stick them in there for if somebody wanted those. I'm just not doing a big supper tonight because we need to kind of clean out the refrigerator. Um, I'll throw away that uh, soup tomorrow. I'll clean out the refrigerator. So we're me and Tony wanted soup tonight, and he likes cornbread with his soup. So I'm going to make it just a skillet. We like kind of a thin skillet of cornbread, so I'm going to stir that up, and I thought I'd film it. So this is how I make my cornbread, and I don't put sugar in my cornbread. Tony would die. Now, if I go to a restaurant or something like the Front Porch and Dixon always put sugar in their cornbread, I like it. Uh, I'll eat it. kind of reminds me of a cake you know, cakey cornbread, you know, cake-flavored cornbread or whatever, because it's sweet, but I still think it tastes good. If I was at somebody's house and they had sugar in their cornbread, I'd still eat it, because it's, you know, cornbread. I love cornbread, um, but I don't put the sugar in my cornbread, because uh, we're usually always eating cornbread with something savory or eating cornbread and milk. I don't know if y'all eat that, uh, cornbread and sweet milk or cornbread and buttermilk, so uh, we wouldn't want that you know, to be sweet. So I don't put sugar in mine, but you can put some sugar in yours if you want to. So anyway, I've got my oven preheating. I got it set on 500 and I'm going to turn this front eye on. I usually have always used uh, bacon grease because it gives your cornbread a real good flavor. Well, I've given up eating pork and beef at least for a little while anyway because my cholesterol and triglycerides for the very first time in my life is high. And even when I was big and fat, almost 400 pounds, my cholesterol and triglycerides were never high. But I have been eating a whole lot of bacon and roast and hamburger patties. I guess that's what it is. Um, I don't really eat fried stuff, but um, I ate a lot of bacon, or was eating a lot of bacon, so I've switched over to eating turkey bacon, and I use ground chicken breast in place of ground beef now. So I'm going to do that for about three or four months, have my blood drawn again, see if that makes a difference. I asked her if I could do that before I, she put me on a statin drug, because I'd rather not take a statin drug if I don't have to, but if I can't fix it with my diet, I'm going to have to add a medication. But anyhow, so this is what I use for my cornbread bowl. And this is my cornbread spoon. Looks like there's something in that bowl. No, no. It's, it's good clean. Okay, so I do, um, this is just a small iron skillet. So I use a cup of um, self-rising uh, cornmeal mix. And uh, this is by Martha White. Uh, it's just what I bought. It was probably on sale. And then I use about a half a cup of self-rising flour. I think it gives the cornbread a good texture. And that's White Lily self-rising flour. That's just what I happened to buy. Like I said, it's probably on sale or something. And then I've got some cultured buttermilk blend powder because I'm out of buttermilk. Um, oh, this done got hard. You can tell it's been up there. Let me make sure this thing ain't expired. Where's the expiration? Oh, it don't expire till 27. It's good. It's just got a, gotten a little hard. So I'll put that in there. There's some of it off in there, I just guess. Uh, and the 
cornmeal mix is a buttermilk flavored self-rising cornmeal mix, but I always add either buttermilk or this buttermilk powder. It just gives a good flavor. I add one egg. And like I said, I'm using the sweet milk, regular old 2% sweet milk uh, to start it out. And there's a certain consistency that I'm looking for. I like my cornbread batter pretty thin. I noticed when I was editing that video last night, me making that fried rice, I had those overalls on. Those overalls done got too big. Um, and they make me look even bigger than I am. So I need to quit wearing them, but they're so comfortable. Y'all got something that you just love to wear that's not very flattering, which, you know, I still got some weight to lose. Uh, I had to go to the doctor early this morning, the ENT. Uh, I've had, I'm having some serious sinus issues, so they scoped me this morning. But I got on their scale this morning. I was fully dressed, and I had a big orange sweater on because it was cold. It was 39 degrees this morning. I had to be there at 8. Um, so fully dressed with my tennis shoes and jeans and all that kind of stuff. When I got on the scale, I was 195. So I still need to lose some. Uh, when I get down to about 170, 175, something like that, that's my goal weight. When I was real big, I said I just want my weight to start with a 1. I'll be satisfied running 199. Well, I done reached that, and I'm not satisfied. So, but it seemed unattainable at the time. But uh, now I'd like to weigh 175, and when I have that, get that to that weight, I'm going to have plastic surgery. I'm going to have my excess skin removed because a lot of this right here in this area is uh, excess skin. And then I'm going to have these done. Put back where they're supposed to be, you know. Because I, I got real low skin. But now I poured avocado oil in here. I started telling you. Um, I uh, used to use baking grease, but I use avocado oil. I don't use olive oil because I like the grease to get really hot. And you can't get olive oil as hot as you can. It doesn't have as high a smoke point as avocado oil. So when I'm frying or using something where I need to really, you know, get the temperature up there, I use avocado oil. And I think this is just Food Line brand. It is. Food line brand. Get the one in the glass bottle. That's supposed to be preserved better. And the olive oil I like to use is the California Olive Olive Ranch, 100% Californian um, extra virgin olive oil. I put this. Uh, I use this for everything else. If it don't need a high smoke point, I use olive oil. But I don't use lard or shortening or canola oil, any of the seed oils. I don't use none of that anymore. I want this just a little bit thinner. The thinner your um, cornbread batter, the better your uh, cornbread will turn out. It'll be light and fluffy and have a nice crumb to it, you know. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I sprinkled a little bit of cornmeal in my um, iron skillet. Can you see that? Here, I'll come a little closer. Like that, it makes it look pretty uh, when you turn out the cornbread on the plate. Uh, it, it just gives it a pretty exterior and kind of a little crunch to it or whatever. So I'll let that brown. To me, when that uh, set there cooking, it smells like popcorn, kind of. But that's about the consistency that I want for my cornbread batter. Can you see that? It's, it really runs. I don't want it to be so pasty that you gotta spoon it out. I want it to run out of there. 
So that's the consistency that I like for cornbread batter. You give it a really good stir. You give it time for that cornmeal and flour to absorb that milk and that liquid. Makes your cornbread turn out better. And then you just pour it off in there. cornbread timer for 20 minutes. Okay, I'll be back in just a minute. And you're cornbread timer, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause it, so it'll be 20 minutes my time, but it'll be just a second when I turn it back on. See you in a minute. Okay, the uh, timer's fixing to go off for the cornbread. There it is. Alexa, off. Okay, I'm gonna take the cornbread out. It's pretty and brown. That will be the bottom. You see that? And it didn't stick. This is my cornbread pan. I don't use it for anything but cornbread, so that's how it falls out really well. And see what that little bit of meal did in the skillet it gave it a pretty little crust or whatever but that's how it turned out and I'll let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes before I cut it that way it'll stay real moist but uh, I know I, sh I should give you a recipe it was a cup of cornmeal but this is for a small like 10 inch skillet uh, a cup of cornmeal half a cup of self-rising both of them self-rising flour I put some buttermilk powder in there because I was out of buttermilk Use sweet milk till it got to the consistency, that pourable, you know, with my spoon consistency. And uh, put some of that hot avocado oil that I heated up on the stove in it. Um, and an egg. Uh, every time you bake something, you need, you know, fat, some kind of fat, which is avocado oil and an egg. That's what gives it rise. Plus, it's got baking soda or baking powder, whatever, and that self-rising cornmeal and flour. But this is how it turns out. And uh, I love cornbread. I don't know about y'all. Um, so I'll let this cool. I'll put this on the stove. Whoa, that's hot. The, the, this is the cheap stove and oven. It was new, but it's, it, it leaks heat real bad. I took out a stick of butter so it could get soft because um, the kids like to put butter uh, on their um, cornbread. Sometimes they'll dip it in ketchup and just eat like cornbread and ketchup. They'll crumble it up and put it in their uh, soup. Um, but when I was growing up, we either had rolls, biscuits, or uh, cornbread uh, at every meal. It's, you know, we had some kind of bread, some kind of potatoes. That's, you know, we grew up southern, kind of poor, lower, middle, you know, middle income, middle class, whatever. But that, that's, I thought everybody ate that way. You know, we had dried beans, dried peas, potatoes, some kind of bread. So I've learned to make cornbread probably when I was like 12 years old and I'm 58 now. So that's a lot of years of making cornbread. But everybody likes my cornbread. Um, but I'm telling you, the secret to it is, um, I, I tell you what, I'll cut it. I'm gonna pause it again one more time and then I'll cut it for you because I want you to see the inside crumb, uh, how making a thinner batter makes the cornbread turn out. So hang on, I'll be right back with it. I thought I'd show you this. I've got this hot skillet in my sink and I've got the water on hot and I'm gonna take this sprayer. You saw the cornmeal that was kind of stuck that stayed in the pan. I don't take no soap. I don't wash my cornbread pan uh, with soap at all. And I just take the sprayer like this and I get all that cornbread out. And if I was in a hurry, I would, um, as you can see, it's clean as it can be. Don't have nothing left in there. It's got a nice shine to it. I could wipe this out with a paper towel, but I don't want to because I don't want fuzzies to get in it. What I do is I take this now that it's washed and I set it back in 
this oven that I've turned off, but it's hot and it's gonna dry that pan right quick for me. And then uh, I'll leave it in there till after supper, whenever I think about it, and I'll get it out and I'll put it in the, in the, ca in the cabinet. But I don't take no soap to it because that'll ruin your, it being uh, non-stick. Uh, you're not supposed to wash uh, iron skillets or iron cookware at all with soap. You just do it with hot water and wipe it out with a paper towel, dish cloth, dish towel, whatever you want to. But that's how I like to do it. I like to uh, spray it out with real hot water, make sure I get everything out of it, stick it back in the hot oven and let it dry right quick and it dries it completely. And so it'll continue to make it non-stick. So that, that's a good tip for your, your uh, iron cookware. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, that I've let this uh, sit. and I usually let it sit for a pretty good while till I get all the drinks fixed and all that kind of stuff, but everybody's kind of doing their own thing, fend for yourself, you know, tonight. So I'm fixing to cut this. Uh, I usually just cut it down the middle. And then I cut it again, like a pie. Can you see the crumb of that? Look at that stain coming off that. But it's uh, got, it's nice and spongy and got all the little holes in it. Got a crispy top. I like to cut it like this because everybody, everybody's favorite part is always the crust, you know? Hush puppy. Um, they know that this is cornbread. I've got two pugs, Ernie, the little boy is five, he just turned five, and Suki is not quite a year old, she'll be a year old in May, and both of them absolutely love cornbread, so they smell it, matter of fact, Ernie lays outside the oven when it's in uh, the oven cooking, when he can start to smell it, because he absolutely loves it, but that's the finished product of my cornbread. Uh, and I showed you what the crumb looks like, but that that's it. Got any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.